Either one, our project is called uh, Lingua Ignota, although um, we should mention that this is really our code, code words for each other. This is a, a prompt for us to kind of um, help remind us uh, about the things that are important for us um, in terms of making creative decisions, and we are um, definitely thinking about using a name that more effectively primes the, the mindset of, of, of the writer or viewer of the, the gallery that you want to mention. Um, well, we're considering something along the lines of the Gateway to Babel, um, just as a very quick self-explanatory title. So my name is Edric Spontanilia. I'm a new media artist based in Rhode Island, and I'm also a, a multimedia technologist at Brown. And my name is Samantha Gorman. I'm a first year MFA candidate grad student in the Writing Digital Media program here. I have a background in digital art and poetry. Here is a work that's done in a virtual reality cave um, based on actually no theater. And here is a work exploring the transition of web space as if it was being remodeled as a physical space between an old gym and a gallery. So my investment is this pro in this project, actually thank you so much for having us. I'm kind of new to the online community. I just started studying it. I just started studying um, the symbolics. And I'm really interested in the form and the content of the symbolics, but especially the, um, the way that the symbols are evocative and suggestive. And in particular, the way that this language that was made for international communication can be kind of used as a site of, of exploring the odd translation when a natural language is mapped onto an artificial language and exposes kind of the poetic um, results that are that are gains from communication between two two others and two different national forces. My recent work in, in the past few years have to do with collaborations with a neuroscientist. Um, these are video art sculptures that explore the the, the ontological states between installation um, sculpture and, and video. Um, and um, my, my investment is in, um, in, um, the, in, in slippages and, and in languages, language as well. Essentially, what, how, how the constraints of, of the different modes of expression affect uh, perception and, and reading. Um, and also, Sam and I happen to share an interest in, in explorations of, of intersections of physical and virtual space. So our project is actually using bliss symbolics the, um, in a way differently than it was intended. I have studied bliss symbolics and I'm sensitive to its use, but we're using it more as a provisional mapping between systems of language in terms of nat um, natural languages that are spoken in the Philippines and the US transferred into a, the conceptual space of bliss symbolics. So in this slide, um, we're, so what we're trying to do is create a platform um, which makes use of uh, text messaging, but on this platform, uh, we hope to actually create a, a number of projects um, that, that explore the ideas that we're talking about today. So it's a language visualizer. We haven't constructed our own language. We're using an existing language to model the SMS text messages sent between the Philippines and the US. And these are the stages of the network of this type of system that we've created. So first, a prompt is sent out across the network based on a symbol in bliss, which is considered a concept space, such as the symbol to forget. That is sent to the SMS users in both countries. They have to reply. Um, either one or the other user can apply. And so this is, this is the column that says, um, um, it's, a, it's a Filipino language that says, Isula Tzadubi. And this is a culturally specific expression to the context, and it means literally um, to write on the surface of water, but it's used to express, you know, to never forget. So that's important. There's also constraints placed on these co-authors that they can either share information with each other with stating like, I or I, or pose a question. So once this is entered into our visualization system, it's actually mapped to Bliss, and it says, 
why write on top of water? Which is, a, you get a different type of, you know, meaning and meaning from that. And that's relevant because it changes the context of what the people on the other side are receiving in their own language on their phone. So they might get why write on top of water. And the response to this transcription is mirrored. First, they have to reply by what they're thinking their communication with the other is telling them. They say, you asked why write on the surface. Um, and then their response back is sent, is sent back to, to the people in the Philippines that sent the original call through the bliss symbolics again. So it's getting you know, a further gateway modification. So conversations grow outward in a thread or forum way from the initial call and response. People are restricted to replying to messages sent from the opposite pole. So you can't reply to two messages in America or two messages in the Philippines. It has to always be this kind of exchange and growing narrative. The concept spaces that we'll show you a visualization of are actually linked by symbols that have recurring frequency appear near each other and can kind of show threads in the conversation that are repeating and suggesting, uh, suggested for you know, concepts um, that are emerging. The gallery users can see these texts coming in in real time and kind of glean different meanings from the symbols and different things that are going on in the conversation. So they're able to zoom in and control the data in 3D. This is a quick um, Con does proof concept visualization of some of these, these data spaces, and these, these are all different conversations happening live that are evolving. This is one particular close-up of the data space, and it's noted that each symbol is actually made up of the you know the concept words that are initiated in the language that give the phrase they're putting into our system. So that would be Tagalog, and then these would be English replies, and they would kind of go off. And so Sam just talked about how this, this project is really about <coughs> visualizing language. Um, we're both very much interested in how personal history and individual voice can play a role in how culturally specific ideas are passed from, from one generation to the next, um, and how these culturally specific ideas are perceived through different lenses. So if you have um, uh, you know, this alien nature of, of the other, how, can, how we perceive communication and how um, we can u only use our perception of what it is to communicate when we communicate with, with the other. Um, um, access is, is something that, that is pretty important to me. Um, imagine this place. This is Aluktok uh, San Juan. This is uh, a six hour drive northwest from uh, the capital of Manila in the Philippines. You have uh, subsistence farming, power outages twice a day, little to no phone infrastructure. Uh, but yet, in uh, even in Peloto, we find um, uh, every uh, mile or so little cardboard signs like this. And this says eLoad Smart available here. This is where folks can upload text credits to, to cell phones, which is widely adopted in the Philippines. Used not for voice, but for text messaging. Um, so, um, you know, in this, this, I think, prevent, uh, presents a really great opportunity for um, uh, an intercontinental and interlingual uh, global collaboration. Um, syntax, in, syntax definitely will affect the gallery viewer's perception of uh, culturally specific worldviews, and this is definitely one of the things that that um, um, is the reason why we chose with symbolics. And it's probably worth mentioning that I'm really interested in the constraints of the symbol set and how they're so simple to write, yet they kind of build on each other and evolve these more complex concepts as you go on. And as we're hoping, the conversations will build on each other to suggest, you know, um, new new phrases and new permutations concerning concept seen from what's understood from the symbols that the gallery viewer would see in their mind and put onto the, this conversation. This is, this is what you just described. 
Um, the other thing that I'm, I'm, I'm curious about is um, taking the, the things, um, the stylistic choices, that, the things that kind of define individuality and, and making them, transforming, transforming them to, to objects. Um, and the second aspect is, is trying to create uh, hopefully a, a, an interesting visualization of bliss symbolics. Uh, one idea might be to impregnate a sculptural surface with photoluminescent powder that would um, continue to glow and depict a, a bliss symbolic that's, that's been projected for a period of time. So the layers of meaning would add up. Exactly right. Yeah, so, so similar, similar ideas um, that might be uh, similar in terms of the, the actual pictograph, um, you get a sense of that in, in the gallery space. Um, we have one minute left, right? Okay. Yeah, maybe it's a good time to take a look. I'm interested in your use of um, a visual, excuse me, a uh, virtual reality, and uh, where you do uh, that, um, and why it's important. I would see, I can understand that sculpture, you can make a three dimensional sculpture, but um, what's the point of that? What's the point of using virtual reality? Of using the virtual? Um, yeah. Well, it, for me, it um, presents an opportunity to uh, you know, create a, a project that is driven by compelling storytelling um, and exchange of ideas and whatever sort of slippages that, that happen when ideas are, are moved from one language to another, from one nation to another. And this happens live in real time, so it's flexible as text messages are coming in where a sculpture is static. So is anybody participating in the exchanges actually watching the space? Or are, are we more watching other people's um, Yeah, so um, depending on um, what you have, so, so the baseline interaction is with um, the cell phone you know, text message, but we hope to, we hope to possibly develop uh, an iPhone app would include the bliss symbolics of the pictograph. So, um, and then there are those who may have um, just the cell phone, but they're in the gallery space, and so you know they'd be able to see the visualizations that way. We have time for one more question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, I understand correctly. You mentioned um, an idiom in uh, the language, yeah. um, meaning riding on water. Um, yeah. As not forgetting, as remembering things, um, it seems odd. There, there's a an English, a rare but excellent uh, English idiom that means exactly the opposite. Yeah, I think that so that's a dupe, dupe actually means to, to forget easily. And there's another there's another idiom that contrasts that, which means to, to actually remember. Um, but I think in this in this case, we're using that as an example just to to indicate what. You know how things can break down, and, and how we can make the the viewer, or the reader, conscious of that. So, so yeah, this is definitely exactly why. Uh, you know, this is what. what it's moments like this that you know we want to find. We try the heart of the art. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.